Welcome to a new video and also a new mini series on writing tests for Golang applications. Golang is one of my favorite languages and if you're into uh, in the uh, DevOps field, it's also one of those uh, languages that's becoming more and more important. It's very easy to write tests in Golang because a lot of the tools are already included. So if you have a Golang runtime installed, you can get started right away. So whether you have some background in Golang or whether you're completely new to the language, this doesn't matter so much for this video series because we're gonna focus on how to structure the tests, what are the best practices and so on. For this very first one, uh, we're just gonna show you how to set up a test, how to write a simple test and doing that all without any kind of dependencies whatsoever. There are a couple of third party packages that might help you in some cases or might not in others. Um, but for this uh, first video, let's get started without any third party libraries. So if we wanna write a test, we need something that we can test. And for this, I prepared a very simple Golang function here, which is called converter and it converts a input string. And what it does is I completely made this up. So if the, uh, input length is seven, then it returns an error. So for some uh, arbitrary reason, seven is not accepted. It, on all other inputs, it splits the string up on anything that is not a letter and not a number. And then it joins the string back into a single string or joins the parts back into a single string using an underscore. So that you can see what it does, I prepared this main function here. And if we just run that, so if we run go to run main.go, you can see that this uh, input that we have above here in line 10 is going to be converted into this thing here. This nil that you see at the end is the second return argument, which is the error. So the first is the string that we want to return and the second is the error. So let's get started writing a test for this. If I run go test, I'm getting a, so this is this is the setup that you have to do in, in Go, which is basically no setup whatsoever. You have this by default, you can run Go test. If I do this right now, you can see that the tests are kind of passing, not really, there's this question mark. And in the end here, it says no test files. And that is because we haven't written any tests yet. So let's get started and let's write our first test. In Golang, there are a couple of conventions that you have to learn basically, and that you have to follow. But if you do, it's also very easy to, um, recognize how it works in other code bases, etc. The first of those conventions is that a test file must end in underscore test.go. So I'm creating this main because I'm testing the main file up here and I'm creating this main underscore test.go. So let me open this and in here I'm putting this into package main. We'll get into uh, about whether you should have your pack your tests in the same package or not. We'll, we'll get into that later. Uh, but for now, let's just have them uh, in this very simple case in one uh, package. So let's write a test and we're calling this test converter. And here you're seeing the second convention. So a test function always has to start with a capital T in the word test. And it has to be passed this thing T here, which is of type pointer to testing.t. Now that might look a bit odd at first, uh, but we'll we'll get into what that is a bit later. For now, just accept that it's here, please. Okay, so if I save that, we now have a test. It doesn't do anything, but we have a test. So if I run go test again, what we can see now is that we get an okay here. This test ran in 250 milliseconds, which is mostly the set of Ontario. The test, of course, uh, didn't take that long because it doesn't do anything. So now let's make that test a bit more useful. So um, as I said before, we have this string converter function and uh, it transforms strings. So let's have an input string, which is this is a sample, smaple, a sample string. And then we have an expected output. And this output would be basically the same. This is a sample string would have been a smarter way to convert this with uh, search and replace. But here we go. Um, now we need to call our function, which was called converter. And we're calling it with input as the only argument. It returns two things. One is the output, the actual I'm calling it and an error. Could also call this actual output an actual error or just out an error. This doesn't matter, uh, just actual as, as, as opposed to expected something that I like to call um, those uh, variables in my tests. So as I said, we're not using any third party packages here. So basically we just have what uh, comes with, with Golang to uh, test this. 
And this is essentially just code that we write. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that this thing doesn't error. So what we're writing is if error is not nil, then we're doing something. And I'm keeping that empty for now, um, but we'll get into that in a second. And the second thing that we want to do is if the actual does not equal the expected output, then we also want to do something. So if we run that again, go test down here, you can see it's still passing. Um, of course, we're not we're not checking anything yet. So um, what we can do here, if the error is not nil, then we want to raise an error. And for this, we have the error f method or the error method. And this is like a print f. So what we can do here is expected no error, but got and then we could just do percentage V uh, for any value and we just put error in. Or you could also do percentage S for string and then it would uh, call the, the error method on this error. And we can do the same thing down here for actual is not expected. We can say expected output to be, we know that it's a string, so we can use string here, but got this string. And then we have to replace the arguments with expected output and actual, sorry, that was the wrong key, expected output and actual. Okay, so let's run it again. And it looks like our tests are still passing. Now, um, this could of course also just be a wrong test setup since we wrote the code before we wrote the test here. Um, the only way to find out really is by modifying our output. So let's just randomly put another character here and run our test again. And now what we're seeing is expected output to be, this is a sample string, ah, but God, this is a sample string. So now our test is failing. And if you remember from the bash mini series, we can check the exit code of the test and the exit code is one. So if you were running this in your pipeline, you would now have a broken pipeline. We can of course fix that again, run the test again, sorry, run the test again. And now you see we have exit code zero. So that was your very first test in Golang. Pretty simple, huh? And uh, we'll get into more complex cases in the following videos. Uh, but for now, uh, this is how a test is set up. And then in the next video, we'll uh, talk about what to do if you want to fail the test early, etc. cetera, uh, these, these kind of things. If you like this video, very happy to receive your thumbs up. Also feel free to subscribe so you get updates for the new videos and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.